Welcome to Stanley. Scuba. Sailing. And adventure. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This is Belize. Lighthouse Atoll. Dive site, Half Moon K Wall. This dive site features large coral heads with deep crevices between them and a massive wall. The depths on top of the wall range from 15 to 70 feet. This video was recorded over a series of two dives on the morning of Tuesday, November 30th, 2021. The first dive at 8 a.m. lasted 50 minutes with a maximum depth of 84 feet. The second dive at 10.30 a.m. lasted 60 minutes with a maximum depth of 62 feet. Since I'm at the back of the group of divers here, everyone went right and I decided to go left. I don't like being the very last diver. It was a beautiful morning and there weren't very many clouds, so this really helped with the visibility. I find that the visibility in Belize can be drastically changed by clouds and wind. I really enjoy the natural formations here with the deep crevices between the large coral formations. And I really enjoy looking up on a clear day back at the surface. You can tell the sun's shining brightly and there really aren't many clouds to speak of. What a wonderful view. In my opinion, Lighthouse Atoll has some of the best reefs for diving in Belize. It wasn't long before the first shark showed up. Underwater, some divers use signaling devices to signal to their buddy if they see something exciting. Some of these sound like a rattle or a bell, and some even sound like a duck quacking. The signaling device I like to use has a much lower tone or pitch than most others. During our last dive, it almost seemed to stimulate the sharks and make them swim right at me. I don't know if that was my imagination. I was ready to test that theory on this dive. In the meantime, there were plenty of other fish to see, including this grouper. I believe this guy is a juvenile French angelfish. What beautiful colors. Here's a school of Creole wrasses. The ones with the yellow are the males. Here's a juvenile three-spot damselfish. From the reading I've done, their appearance really seems to change over the course of their lives. This little guy seems pretty shy. He keeps ducking into his hole. I'm hoping to get a little closer for a better picture and some video. I was enjoying my time with this damselfish when I suddenly felt like I should look behind me. Recalling that my signaling device previously had seemed to have had an impact on the sharks, I decided to test this theory and see if I could get this shark to turn around, and he turned around very quickly indeed. Continuing to test my hypothesis, perhaps unwisely, I got the shark to turn around again and swim directly at me. Here I try it yet again, and the shark does not seem as impacted by the sound, but does turn and make another pass very close by. This allowed for some great video and photo opportunities. Even after I stopped, the sharks made several more passes very close to me. It was quite exhilarating. I managed to get underneath the shark as it passed overhead against the bright sunny sky and it made for some fantastic photographs. Here the shark responds to the signaling device again as I try to let my buddy know the shark was approaching him from behind. Although here I didn't make a second signal, the shark did turn and make another extremely close pass. These head-on passes from the sharks made for some great photo opportunities. 
I'm still sifting through hundreds of photos I took on this one particular dive and probably a thousand or more pictures I took over the course of this whole week in Belize. In my reef fish identification book under reef sharks it says reaction to divers that they may be wary, generally keep their distance but may make close passes. I decided to test that reaction one last time. Look how excited that shark gets. In that same book, under reaction to divers, it also says, consider dangerous, especially in the vicinity of spearfishing activities. Additional sharks started to show up and I thought it best to stop using the signaling device. The sharks were still making very close passes and there was really no further need for it. It was a great dive and the stimulated sharks made for some great photo opportunities and video opportunities. This is where one of my favorite photos was taken with me in the background of the shark. That's the captain of the ship there with the lights on his camera. Here's another one of the divers getting some great action shots. The sharks still seem particularly interested in me. You know, this guy made a really short quick run at me and then turned away. I was trying to focus back on the reef at the fish. Very difficult to do with all the sharks around. Reef sharks have relatively slender bodies and they are also easy to identify because they have dark to black on the underside tips of their pectoral fins and the tips of their ventral fins. I certainly wouldn't recommend what I did with the sharks to any other divers. It probably wasn't a very good choice and I probably got very lucky that nothing bad happened. Here a shark swims right between me and my dive buddy as we're moving into the shallower water on top of the wall. Another shark makes another pass near my other dive buddy's fins. I got a slight bump on that pass. I swam up to the pin where the boat was moored and spent some time with this angelfish at the very end of the dive. It was quite curious. It would swim away and then stop and look back at me for a little while. It was a good time and a great way to end the dive. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment.